guys, it's Nat from Made in Shortage. I'm here today with two lovely men from Relation Wise and Kat and Adendi. Uh, hi, hi guys, can you introduce yourself to us? Yeah, hi, I'm James uh, from Canada Dandy. We are a tailoring company based in the city and Savile Row, and uh, we try and make people look good. Good. What about you? Yeah, my name is uh, Christian. Uh, I'm from Denmark. The company is Danish, but now we are in London to make it big. It's a tech company where we uh, help companies to listen to their clients and in order to improve the satisfaction and the loyalty. Cool. Okay, so um, we're here today in London, the city, Cat in the Dundee. And um, our first question for me is, uh, guys, what is your business about? How did you start and why this kind of business? So maybe Christian, you first. Sure, you know, it's uh, basically I think there's a lot of companies who's not doing very well with customer service. So uh, we try to find out a solution how we can actually, it's easier for companies in a smart way to listen to their clients. Mm, okay. um, and so we made this very smart technology solution where it's uh, every time people that have purchased, for example, a nice suit like in this, uh, this fancy shop, they can, we can automatically send out a question to the client and ask, you know, were you happy with everything? Or not, you know, would you actually recommend you know, this to your friends? Mm -hmm. And if not, why? Mm -hmm. And the company, they'll get a lot of good feedback, so they can start to improve mm -hmm. the service. And how old is the company now? Oh, actually, uh, it started as a student product like uh, 10 years ago oh. back in, in Denmark. And uh, now we're in Denmark, Sweden and England. Okay, growing. Okay, what about you, James? Um, well, we've been running Cabin and Andy for about five years. Okay. Um, and have grown amazingly quickly in that time. Um, and our business ethos is to make fantastic suits at a fantastic price. Okay. Um, and we got together with Christian because you know it's, it's so important for us, mm. um, customer satisfaction. Yeah. You know, everybody likes their suit to fit differently. It's yeah. not just one product. Everybody likes their suit to fit tight, mm. snug, loose, comfortable. So you know, each individual is, is as unique yeah. as the suit. Yeah. So focusing on the individuals will be what we have to do as a, what we have to do as a business. And um, English guys are fantastic. They love to look smart, but they're not necessarily always the most vocal about saying, you know what, maybe next time I want my sleeves a little bit shorter, a little bit longer, a bit more comfort. So having a system like this in place means that people will feel more able to say, hey, look, you know, I found this service fantastic, but you know, let's uh, next time I want to see more fabrics. Or, you know, it's little things that we can do to make sure that you know our product or offering our service is uh, second to none. Okay, great. So, question, how did you guys meet? What's the story? Oh, what's the story? Dating yeah. <laughs> 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 networking events, friends? No, really not. They Christian were needed a suit. I needed yeah. a suit. That, that was the first <laughs> thing is I thought, I'll, I'll do some business with this guy. <laughs> no, the story is that our offices are in, in shortage. And so we actually just do for some companies here in the neighborhood. Yeah. And it was more like a coincidence that business, you know, uh, so can they any maybe on the website, I don't mm. know. And then uh, called you guys and said, uh, maybe let's have a meeting. Yeah. As he and said that. Yeah. You know, it's that easy. Well, yeah. I think when you have a good a good product, it's very easy to see the relative merits yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's been a fantastic learning curve for us to you know having the system in place so we can get you know the feedback, the little niggles. Yeah. Um, you know, and make sure that our service is um, is you know continue to be uh, you know unparalleled mm. in, in what we do. We've seen enormous growth mm. you know last year we were 65 percent up in you know what was a, a pretty tough year for for retail in general um, and we've bucked the trend but yeah. we've got to make sure that you know as our business goes like this our service also continues yeah. with it. so you know it's it's a great product that we can uh, we can use to refocus on you know what we do not just the product yeah. but the service mm. and those two are just as important as each okay. other so that's amazing that's a great story kind of what interests me here is that you know you guys both work in shortage and city and you know, decided to work together. So, uh, what about uh, you, Christian? Are you getting a suit from James soon? Hopefully, you <laughs> <In> know. <return? laughs> Give me ten minutes. <laughs> See okay. if you can uh, make some miracles, you know. <laughs> but guys, talking about business and uh, nowadays, as you say, you know, the whole you know uh, problems that we every business <coughs> faces. What uh, challenges have you had re recently that maybe you can tell us that you uh, you know uh, conquered and. What kind of tips can you give us? Yeah, sure. You know, I, it, it, even though it's a technology company I represent, it's uh, actually, I think it's more important to talk about company culture. Yeah. And the way I see it, you know, there are two kind of different cultures out there. There's a company culture of uh, where people that want to improve all, all mm -hmm. the time. Um, and then there's a company culture of mediocrity. And unfortunately, I see a lot of companies 
with that kind of culture with, yeah. of mediocrity. And I think uh, we all try to experience that when you are buying something and you say, hey, the service was really bad or the product quality was really bad. And the problem is when you have a company culture of mediocrity, they, the employees don't really want to make a difference. You know? yeah. they, they're just there for the, for the paycheck. So what we try to, uh, to do with our uh, solution is to empower companies out there to actually start to listen to the clients. Mm -hmm. And through the feedback, they can start to improve and get that uh, culture of uh, constant improvement. Exactly. Okay, what, about, what do you think, James? What kind of challenges are there that you, you found yourself Well, comparing? I mean, in, a, in our specific area, you know, yeah. retail is, is, is tough out there. Mm. Um, you know, luxury is one of the biggest areas that's always going to be hardest hit in a recession. Mm. People start cutting back on the extravagances. Yeah. Um, but despite that, you know, as I said, we had a you know we had a fantastic year. The start of this year has been, been, been fantastic as well. Um, and our business success has been always focused on two things: the product and the service. Yeah. We never advertise; it never really pays off. But what is key is customer referrals. Mm. Everybody's much more likely to come and buy a suit from you if they say, "Hey, look, this one was made by these guys at Cad and the Dandy. Yeah. Uh, why don't you go and get your next suit from these guys?" And that's yeah. how our business survives. Mm. So, referrals, recommendations, and but fundamentally, the customer is the most you know important thing to to keep happy and make sure we're providing an impeccable mm. service. That's and, and that's very key what you say that it's about you know make people so happy that they start to recommend you. Yeah. Because what we've mm. seen you know in so many companies, they measure customer satisfaction. And we could actually call it the satisfaction trap because mm -hmm. though you have a satisfied satisfy the customers, that doesn't mean they actually want to be loyal. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean they want to stay with you. Maybe they get a, a better price in another place and they will just swap. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and most important, if they make them really happy, not just satisfied, but really happy, you know, they will start to recommend you yeah. to other uh, yeah. friends, for example. That makes sense. And, and that's also why we, uh, we don't ask about satisfaction, we actually ask your clients about would you recommend Candle Dandy to your friends and colleagues for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, so going into more kind of happy place, think about, tell me about you know one thing that, uh, why did you start a business, why actually this, what's the passion behind it? So maybe James first, you and Ian obviously you founded well, Candle Yeah, well I, I spent um, many years on the trading floor. Okay. And obviously as a banker, <laughs> obviously as a banker and it's a pretty you know, I just did not find, you know, it's a fine job, it's fantastic, you get well paid, you, there's lots and lots of benefits, yeah. but there's nothing creative about it. Mm -hmm. um, and the more time I spent on the, on the floor, the more I just kept thinking, well, I'm just not doing anything apart from moving numbers and zeros from here to there. Yeah. Um, my family were manufacturing, we make cloth, um, so I kind of know everybody in the industry. Um, and a similar thing um, that Christian was saying. There are two options normally in tailoring. You either go to Savile Row mm -hmm. and you have to spend an incredible amount of money, or you go and see a traveling tailor that's flying in from Hong Kong and you get a terrible service and a terrible product. There must have been something in the middle, yeah. and there wasn't. So that's where we came along and said, well, Savile Row are fantastic tailors, but they're not fantastic businessmen necessarily. Mm -hmm. So let's make a fantastic business, let's make a clean business model that means that we can do it at a lower price, mm -hmm. um, but bridge those two those two divides, mm -hmm. charge a sort of more traveling tailor price of, you know, but as a several red product. And obviously you're a fan of suits. Oh, yeah, it's an addiction. It's an addiction. <laughs> One that's slightly better than drugs. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that wasn't said. <laughs> what about you, Christian? Where's the passion coming from? Why this I kind think of like the, I know you used to work in a bank, you know, so that was maybe also with me some frustration, not from working in a bank, but being yeah. at the university. Yeah. Uh, I started studying <laughs> social science, you know, it was very interesting, but it was just too theoretical for me. Yeah. And I wanted, you know, you know, something where I could create something. Mm. And, but being from Denmark is not very normal, you know, you start up your own company. But my father, he's, uh, he was uh, self-employed, so I, I kind of like maybe had that in, in my blood, so to speak. Or, um, so that's why, yeah. Entrepreneurial you know, spirit. Yeah, so I mean, entrepreneurial spirit. <laughs> um, so that's why I started up in, uh, in Denmark. There you go. And it's been very exciting. I can highly recommend that to other people. Okay. And that's also one of the reasons why I'm here in London. You know, you've got the whole tech city here in, in short. It's the, yeah. the Silicon uh, Roundabout, yeah. and it's fascinating to see you know all the new startups we got here, <coughs> both in technology companies, but also like you know like retail, can, retail, 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 yeah. Retail, yeah. Exactly. It's a, it's a, it takes a certain type of person to be self-employed. Mm. You know, it comes with different stresses and and different issues and far longer hours than even you know even banking hours. But the rewards you get are you know unparalleled. You know, exactly. you feel like you're controlling something, you're creating something. In our case, 
I get to bring my dog to work. You know. <laughs> yeah, we have Pandora here. Every day I have a smile on my face and I love our customers. Make sure the picture is there. Love what we do. Yeah, so guys, last thing, if you can tell me uh, one tip for all these people, young, especially people who want to start a business, and especially in this these times that are not so easy, one tip for, you know, starting a business, what do you, what should you do to kind of do that first, you know? Well, I met so many people who me. said, like, I want to start up a business, yeah. but they, uh, they have a lot of ideas, but it's not really about the ideas, it's about doing it, it's about yeah. execution. It's about, you know, going out and say, okay, let's just jump. And uh, and then just hope for the and best. Don't worry. Don't worry. You know. You know. Because if you start to to worry or if you start to actually plan, you know, it, it, there'll, there'll be a lot of problems. There'll be a lot of challenges. Mm. So uh, just do it, and uh, it would be rewarded for sure. Yeah. Okay. What about you, James? What would um, you say, especially to young people? Yeah, I'd probably say um, keeping your costs under control. And the easiest way of doing that is using the people you know, using in the nicest sense. So when we first did our website, it was a friend of mine that did the mm. website. Um, we got another friend to do the photographs. Our first photo shoot cost yeah. us a hundred pounds. Yeah. If you keep your costs low, you have a far greater chance of success. It's very easy to say, right, we'll do a photo shoot. We're going to be big guys. Let's spend ten, twenty thousand pounds on a photo shoot. Yeah. But immediately, that's put your startup costs yeah. to you know pretty pretty high. And keep your costs under control and, yeah. and, and rely on the people around you. Ask their opinions. Would they yeah. buy your product? Would they come and buy your coffee? Would they come and buy your suit? Would they? Do they like your website? You know all these little things. Use that information around you, yeah. and hopefully your uh, you know your friends and family will be your harshest critics, but also your biggest backers. There you go. So guys, one more thing. When we talk about it, obviously it's made in shortage. So is there any favorite spots in shortage that you've got and you can share with us? Might be a you know. Pop, oh, that's difficult. Pop, that a lot, you know. <laughs> one last thing, so that you know someone can actually. Oh, I haven't been there. Need to check it out. What about you, Christian? Well, you know, we, often, James, we often have team nights out at Pizza East. Okay, there and, you go. Uh, That's a good place, yeah. I know this place. Yeah. And it's just one of those places that you can go and have a quick drink, go and get a nice bite to eat, and yeah. uh, you know you can escape the madness of the city. All the city, you yeah, know, exactly. Around here, we're just with the bankers, and they're Work's hopefully... Work's done, we, let's we, go. We, we feel we're slightly <laughs> with a more creative bunch, yeah. but... You know, it's uh, there are so many places that are you know wonderful. Twenty four hour bagels, so okay. that's also quite good after that's uh, a famous one. after night out. <laughs> <laughs> it's scary. It's scary. There's twenty four seven, but okay. What about you, Christian? Favorite spot? I, I would say there's a really nice spot on uh, Great Eastern Street. I think it's actually Great Eastern Street number one. It's quite difficult yeah. when you you know walk uh, down the street to to notice it. It's called the uh, Bohemian Lounge, mm -hmm. okay. and uh, it's kind of like okay. you can't just walk in from the street. <laughs> you actually have to make an appointment, not a reservation, yeah. but an appointment. So they kind of like try to keep it a little bit like no like key. a secret place, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. underground. It is also underground. It is like in the, in the basement. They play jazz music. It's very Eastern European. That sounds great.